Although this speech difference we call stuttering is by far in the minority of speech defects, its influence on the emotional insecurity and the subsequent personality development is in many instances much more devastating than in any other kind of speech problem. Whatever approach one takes in studying this problem, it can only be dictated by the researcher's own academic preparation. It isn't at all odd to me that a man whose main orientation is in aphasia to think of stuttering as perseveration. It isn't odd that a psychoanalytically minded person sees stuttering as oral masturbation, or that a psychologist oriented, oriented in laws of learning to see stuttering as a learned act and a semantically oriented person naturally views stuttering as a semantogenic problem. A neurologically trained person follows his orientation and is inclined to look for disintegration of the central nervous system. All of us with our own special qualifications set up investigations hoping and looking for verification for our prejudices. If one is going to continue the search for possible etiologic factors in stuttering, and I hope many do, it would certainly do no harm for speech pathologists to encourage and to cooperate with biochemists, neurophysiologists, endocrinologists, and others who know much more about the human organism. This uh, cooperating would undoubtedly help, but in another sense, is anyone yet that calls himself homo sapien prepared to solve this riddle? We are indeed a very complicated organism. So I say in dealing with such a complicated act as talking, one can at least try to welcome as many attacks as are available in studying it. All scientists should be closely knit colleagues. We need to solicit and encourage such help. And I want to say regarding the subject of our concern here that the search into this process reality called stuttering I do find interesting and challenging. And I'm fully aware that as long as the word ends in ing it must be a process ever dynamic changing and alluring. I don't believe at the present that the original cause or causes of the phenomenon of stuttering are yet known. The factually true answers, if any there are, may never be found. But this shouldn't deter researchers from asking questions and making observations, continuing their studies. Now it's most fortunate that there is among speech pathologists much unanimity of opinion about stuttering in its clinically observable development from unobtrusive and easy blocks or prolongations of the breath stream to gross muscular tensions and facial grimaces and meshed in personal feelings of inferiority on the part of the stuttering child. So remember, if I have cast any darkness or gloom over our ignorance as to etiology, I can truthfully say that there is much sunshine over the clinical horizon, particularly in the area of clinical treatment. Many speech pathologists have for many years spent their energies in the direction of helping the stutterer to get over his fears adjust his aspirations to speak up to his abilities, become more fluent and fluent enough to live happily in his environment, and very importantly, to stutter more easily and see the humor that others see in his breath-splitting articulation. 